name that tune. That was an easy one. Good morning, everyone. It's Thursday morning. I left my little camera phone thing out in the car last night, and this morning didn't feel like going out in my pajamas to get it. So I will just show you all a picture of breakfast. I had an extreme mel uh, wellness. I had an extreme wellness wrap for one smart point. I had three eggs for zero smart points. I had a piece of Velveeta 35 calorie cheese for one smart point. And then I'm having cold brew with a cup of almond milk for one smart point and some stevia drops. So three smart points for breakfast. I'm on fire today. We're going to get this together. Um, I'm, oh my goodness, sir. Got some cements. See that? Did you see that? Yeah. All right. Well, we had to back up a little bit because the big, big truck with big pieces of cement was going to hit me. Um, what this guy's doing is driving really slow. On this big truck. <laughs> Yay for traffic. I am. Uh, yeah. So I'm having my cold brew this morning and I didn't put any sugar-free sweetener in it. I'm broken out. I'm hormonal. This week has been very challenging because I have been stressed out at work and hormonal. So we have like a shakeup going on. I can't believe I got behind this guy. I should have gone. I think he was waiting for me to go in front of him. But what was I going to tell you? Some sort of story. I can't remember what it was. Uh, oh, we're having a kind of a shake up at work. Just things are changing and it's not, it's not negative at all. It's just change. And you know, like when stuff is changing, it's stressful. My new glasses are dirty. Dag nabbit. What is dag nabbit? Like, what is that? Who came up? My dad used to say that. My dad's a pastor. I grew up as a PK, and um, I'm trying to clean my glasses on my pants. We're driving really slow right now, so might as well work on my sunglasses. I gotta have them, because it's really bright out this morning. But he never said anything worse than like, nag, nab it. Or sometimes he would say, blame it. He would yell, blame it. He wouldn't really yell it, he didn't really yell. I've never heard my dad Nurse. Now, my mother is a nurse, so that's another story. Nurses, we have our moments. We just have our moments. Uh, I don't know what it is, but my father, the preacher, never, never heard him say anything. We weren't allowed to say any kind of words growing up. Like, we weren't allowed to say, oh my gosh. Because gosh was, you know, a substitution for taking the Lord's name in vain and stuff. So, we, we grew up very, you know, conservatively and strictly and politely. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, sir. So, when I moved to New York, I remember one night I was sitting at the nurse's station and one of my friends uh, asked me to do something something for her you know we would say stuff like hey could you go adjust my monitor like if you're charting on somebody else or whatever and or hey can you whatever you just ask a friend to, to do something that's what you do in nursing you work it's very much teamwork oriented or you will never make it you'll never make it and so um I she asked me hey could you go adjust my monitor I'm trying to do such and such and I said yes ma'am and I got up and I went and adjusted her patient's monitor and I came back and she was like, why'd you call me ma'am? And I was like, huh? <laughs> She's like, she up north, they, it comes off as almost like disrespectful or anyway, we had this whole conversation. Cause that's what you do at two in the morning. You had a whole conversation about, you know, the way that we speak in this country and how different it is from culture to culture, person to person, and that you can say something and it can totally be like mistaken for something else. She thought I was being like 
snippety or like, um, I don't know what it was. It was really funny though. And one of the doctors said that to me too, uh, as well. One of the doctors said that to me as well. She, one night she said, um, I want you to start pit, you know, two units go by two every 15 minutes. And let's see if we can't get her into an adequate contraction pattern. And I was like, yes, ma'am. She just looked at me. And I couldn't figure out why she looked at me, but she thought I was being like disrespectful or some or something. It was weird. Weird, but I get it. And that's, you know, you do have to be somewhat sensitive. Uh, there's that balance. You know, we have freedom of speech, but then you always gotta take into consideration how you're coming off. I mean, the same thing is true with texts and emails and stuff. You just be really careful because you can sound like a jerk and jerk jerk. Um, <laughs> oh, which reminds me. Okay, so on Monday I had the unit. You know, I was running the whole show. And the front desk and I are close friends and talk all the time. I mean, we're constantly, I'm like, constantly on the phone with them. Do this, do that. Can you do this? What about this? You know, and they're like constantly, hey, we have this question, whatever. So we call back, back and forth all day. And one, so my phone rang and we have caller ID and it said registration. And so I had just talked to them about something and it was to the point where I, it was like I was being bombarded with all kinds of stuff. And so I picked up the phone and I was like, what? You got, what? Something like that. Just being, you know, casual with my friends. I learned a lesson. And I hear, it sounded like they had me on speakerphone, which is not abnormal. And the person on the other line was like, did so-and-so already come in? And I was like, yes. You guys, really? We just talked about this. <laughs> and there's like silence on the other end. And I was like, Brenda? Who I thought it was. And the person on the other end was like, no, this is Dr. Smith. Not, not her real name. One of my attendees. Uh, like one of the people running the show in terms of the physicians. And I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I was like, Dr. Smith. Yes, so and so has already come in. And Dr. Smithette and I saw her and Dr. Smithette was in the room and Dr. Smithette goes, hey Amy, it's Dr. Smithette. Oh yeah, Dr. Smith. Amy and I already saw so-and-so. And they're kind of laughing, but kind of not laughing. So I'm like, oh, so I hang up the phone and I go into Dr. Smith's office because she has her office, you know, down the hall. And I was like, hey, I'm so sorry. I was not trying to be disrespectful at all. This is what happened with so-and-so. And Dr. Smith and Smithette and I saw her. <laughs> Dr. Smithette, who's one of the residents, is like over there <laughs> looking at me like, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. Like I stuck my foot in my mouth. Okay, so then... Dr. Smith and Dr. Smithette left because they were done for the day and they went back over to the hospital and <laughs> they went back to LFD. <coughs> and Dr. Smith calls the main nurse's station phone line instead of me directly, which I don't know why she did that, but one of the techs answered and was like, hey, Amy, it's Dr. Smith on the phone, and it's like way across, you know, and, and I said, hey, transfer her. <laughs> so, the tech goes to transfer her, and it hangs up on her. I was like, I cannot win for trying today. So then I try to call her back. Her phone's busy. I'm like, <laughs> so... She ends up texting me, and she texts me what she was calling about. And I text her back. I'm like, I'm so sorry. 
that I hung up on you or that you were hung up on today because I didn't, I didn't hang up on her but I was like it has been a Monday around here and she wrote back no worries with like a smiley face so yeah that's that's been my life this week so I have all that going on and we have a lot of transition transitional stuff happening and like big question mark in the air um, I've had two lunch meetings this week where I've had to go to a meeting and eat lunch while I'm there so I'm not able to film or take pictures it's not appropriate can't have your cell phone out because I'm on the clock um, so yeah I've been all over and then we've had we've been working every night on Asher's final project just helping him like last night he needed to add color to the trifold and so I was going through all my old scrapbook paper and cutting out, you know, stuff for him, and it's just been a lot, and in between all of that, I have been just sort of, I think because I used all my weeklies on the weekends, which remember, I'm not doing that anymore because it messes me up, oh, my allergies, it messes me up for the rest of the week because I feel out of control, like I feel like I don't have any cushion, I have just been... I've been tracking, I've been doing really well, and then in the evenings I've been like stress eating, like in, in weird ways. Like last night I got out a bag of um, like whole grain popcorn, and they call it whole grain, I don't know, like, I know you want to go to work, so do I, just chill out. Um, and I ate like probably two servings of that and then I had two enlightened bars and they didn't, none of it made me feel any better honestly it made me feel worse and I was like kind of in a downward spiral but it has to be hormones I even told my husband this morning like I'm sorry I'm hormonal and he's like I know he's like I figured out what was going on and I was like, have I been really bad? And he said, yeah, you just, I must, I just have really bad PMS, you guys, or something. Because I just have a really hard time for like about a week. And I won't be surprised if I'm up at the scale. I earned that between the weekend of graduation eating and then this week I'm just sort of like grazing, justifying, and Oh, I haven't been walking this week. Yeah, I'm just not, I'm not doing a great job this week. That's okay. I'm still on my journey and I'm still on my program. Last night, after I ate the two enlightened bars, I went and tried on a bunch of my, like, smaller size clothing. Just to remember that, number one, I got rid of my bigger sizes. Number two... Like, I have a size large shirt right now, a button-up from the Gap that buttons up. It's a little, little snug, a little snug on the belly. But, and I got out my, you know, those size 12 jeans from the Gap that are, I want to get into those this fall. I do. I'm, I'm going to do it. So I just got things out, tried them on, tried to reset my brain. I'm trying to come back around on the circle of motivation. You know, you start high motivation, you circle around, you get to periods of low motivation. And if you hang on, you're going to circle back around. So I'm, I'm hanging on. I'm still tracking. I'm just not doing the best job. I haven't been drinking water. Like all my goals are sort of, not, I'm just not meeting them. But today is a new day. I started off great. I'm going to have a great day. I'm going to try to get my steps in today and drink my water and just, you know, keep going. This is a life, a lifetime thing for me. And there's no getting off of, you know, the program because there's no stopping life. And, I, you know, I had a patient yesterday that was younger than me in really rough shape and because of HIPAA I can't go into it obviously but the surgeon very point
pointedly asked, you are so young, why are you in the shape that you're in? And this person said, you know, my ancestors didn't eat well, and you know, whatever, sort of not, not taking full responsibility for their part in that. And I had to step back and think about how, how many times I have not taken responsibility for where I'm at, and I blamed it on heredity, or at which there is that component, I'm not negating that at all, or I blamed it on stress, or I blamed it on circumstance, or, you know, whatever, whatever it is. I mean, I, I had a patient this week tell me that they don't have the money to eat healthy food. get a prescription on their Medicaid for vitamins. And that really stopped me in my tracks. Honestly, just sort of broke my heart because we have resources out there that can provide food for people in those situations, but it's not always the best. It's not like, you know, the foods are canned foods or foods high in sodium or high in fat or, you know, if you've ever donated to a food pantry, you know you're not donating a lot of, like, super healthy stuff. It's a lot of shelf-stable stuff and it's hard to get those people, like, you know, good quality lean meats and fresh produce and, you know, and I'm talking about those people as in people that are not able to afford those things, which could be any one of us at any time because you guys have seen the stories of people that are homeless and they had these great jobs and now they're homeless and can't afford anything and so the government can only do so much and you know private charities and those sort of things I work in a charity environment I don't know if you guys knew that but um, we have resources but our resources are limited we're always looking for new resources it's difficult so just taking responsibility and you know, even those situations, even though I see that type of stuff on a daily basis, do I, do I think about it and actively change my own life? No, I go home and I eat half a bag of popcorn and two Enlightened Bars. And those Enlightened Bars are $4 a box. So there is a, you know, that is something that I need to work on in my own life, um, being thankful and, and taking care of the resources that I have so that I can turn around and take care of other people instead of sitting around feeling stressed and blah, blah, blah. I've got to reframe my thinking. And God is constantly showing me, I believe, he's constantly show, reflecting back the areas that I need to work on in the eyes of other people and sometimes I just re I refuse to sort of look in the mirror you know what I'm saying like I ref I don't look at myself clearly and I'm in delusion and I think that eating popcorn and a light bar is going to help with whatever's going on and it doesn't so that's where I'm at I'm going to try to show you lunch and dinner I know I've been talking for a long time but I wanted to catch up with you guys and let you kind of know going on with me this week, where my head's at, and my head's sort of in a fuzzy place, but I'm working on it, and I'm very excited to go to my meeting on Saturday. I'll see you guys at lunch, and then I'll see you at dinner, and then I'll try to keep this video <laughs> under half an hour. Here is Thursday's lunch. I have a piece of barbecue chicken. It just has the Penzi's barbecue um, seasoning on it and some broccoli. I also have a big salad here. This is all zero points with one point worth of Kirkland cheese. And I'm going to put a point worth of light Italian dressing on it. And then zero point for the chicken, zero for the broccoli, obviously. And then let's see if I can open this. I have some sugar-free barbecue sauce for zero. So we're going to be counting two points for lunch. And I have some water gonna go eat. Oh. Hello. <laughs> Hello. We are at Applebee's. 
Ash, we are celebrating Asher. We're just going to celebrate him for the whole month. He finished his final project. All he has to do is present it tomorrow night. So we're here eating. Let me show you what we got. Hamburgers. You know, every so time. Asher has the... I don't know, just a lot of meat, basically. Meat burger. And onion. And these guys over here got... Other burgers. Other burgers. Judah, how many points left do you have for today? To uh, eat? 26. He's got 26, so he's eating a cheeseburger with Blow fries. Them blowing them all on his meal. And then this three. one. He has three points, and he's eating three points worth of hamburger. He always has three points, and he eats three points. Everybody. Then I have 19 points, and I got the Chinese chicken salad, but I got grilled chicken and the dressing on the side. So I'll count points for whatever they put on the chicken. And then I've got some little fried wontons and some almonds in here, so, and water. So we're having fun. Hey everybody, I'm sitting here with Judah. We're Hello. home from Applebee's. And I just thought maybe you guys would want to hear a little update from him. How's it going? Mm, it's going well. This is week, we're almost done with week two for you. We're close, we ended on Saturday. Um, for Weight Watchers, why is it so dark? It's the light in the background. Oh. So what do you think? So far so good. I'm enjoying it. I've been very active. Trying to balance the, the food and the activity. Um, trying to get my step going every day. Mm -hmm. I've gotten my blue dot five days in a row. Um, yeah. Which I'm happy about. So what, so what are the positives and what are sort of the difficulties? Positives, there's more structure. I feel very disciplined, kind of on top of things. So that's a good feeling. Yeah. Negatives, it's a little tedious sometimes having to record everything. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're like hungry and you want to eat something and then it's like, oh, too many points, that can be a little discouraging. Yeah. Uh, but that's okay. But are you, are, do you feel like you're feeling better overall? I feel like I'm making progress towards something <clears throat> that I didn't really realize was there before. Oh. Um, so I can I can feel the improvements. It feels like it's actually mattering. I'm getting um, a lot of support. I'm getting a lot of support too. So that helps. Yeah, definitely. And then it seems like you're kind of in a pattern where you eat lower during the day and then you have something you really want for dinner. Our meals tend to be a little bit point heavy, so I'll eat something pretty light for lunch. Maybe have a snack in the afternoon and then spend most of my points at dinner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I just thought we would check in um, since Judah is on his second week and you're planning on weighing in on Saturday, Saturday. Mm -hmm. morning we'll on the happens. Tanita scale and we'll update you guys then as to how he's doing week two. Fingers crossed. He's doing so great and thanks all, uh, thanks for supporting him. It means a lot, I know, to have, he knows a lot of people are rooting for him. Yeah, so. it helps a lot. Yeah. Hey everybody, so I'm gonna close out the vlog. Um, I haven't had anything else to eat. I counted about 10 points for um, dinner, so I have nine left. Um, I might have some cantaloupe. I bought these really sweet cantaloupes. They're so good right now, so in season. So I'm gonna do that and then probably call it a night and try to have another great um, low point day tomorrow to kind of compensate for me being all over the place this week. But I'm feeling very strong, very high motivation. Um, I have another vlog from Monday where I was kind of schlumpy, so I might post that one as well, but I think I'm going to put this one up first, um, just because it's positive and, you know, I just want to remain positive, but I think I'll put them both up just so you can kind of see the beginning of the week as opposed to the end of the week, because I think this is a normal arc for people that we just have periods of really high motivation and then we have some periods of low motivation and we just have to keep going, pull ourselves out of it and it can be <sighs> challenging to keep your head in the game. So <laughs> um, just know that I am in this struggle with you guys and I really appreciate your continued support and patience with me. Um, you know, I won't always be able to put up daily vlogs, but I do try to get on here and put up as much as I can. Um, but it is important for me to have family time and downtime and all of that. So, um, but I'm here. I'm still working towards my goals and extremely active in terms of um, just being on Weight Watchers. You know, that's what I'm doing right now. So <laughs> drop me a note. Let me know how you're doing. Uh, let me know where you're at in terms of motivation and 
I will see you guys tomorrow on the vlog as well. So we'll try to get up a couple of vlogs uh, today and tomorrow, and then I will definitely see you on Saturday for weigh-in. Um, no matter what it is, I'm excited to get back to my meeting. So thanks again for your support, and I will talk to you later. Bye.